Hey guys, this is Mohan Pogar, and if you like Gary Vee, you're gonna love this video. I'm sure you heard about him talking about buying and fixing old brands, fixing them and selling them then later for uh, much, much profit. Well, this is what I'm doing for a living for the last three years. I'm buying businesses, I'm fixing them, and I'm growing them. And I wanna show you in this next video what I would do if I were him to go and buy those old brands, how to fix them, and how to grow them. I'm gonna show you step by step, or now I'm doing those things on with small businesses, and how you can do the same. So yeah, enjoy. Oh, and yeah, nothing to sell, no webinar to register, just me showing you on my YouTube channel what I'm doing step by step. So yeah, just click on the link below and you'll go directly to my YouTube channel. Um, you'll see, you don't need to opt in, you don't need to pay for anything, just me sharing my journey. Um, yeah, so enjoy. Hey guys, so yeah, if you're a Gary Vee fan, you're gonna love this video because I saw some of his latest videos and people told me about it and he's talking a lot about going out there, fixing a business and then flipping it for much more money down the road. And I mean, this is what I'm doing for a living with my partners with our firm, we're talking to businesses every day. And that's our goal basically, to buy them, fix them, and then hopefully either flip them or just grow them as a group, buy more companies to the group that have synergies, cross-selling opportunities. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step what I would do if I were um, Gary Vee or anyone else is talking about uh, doing those things. So yeah, let me go through that right now. And not only that, I'm also gonna walk you through what are the first steps that I need I think every business should do as soon as so as soon as you buy a business, if it's an old brand, lots of things to ch change, fix. Or the technology is many times very old. I'm going to show you what I think are the first few key things you should do in a business in order to kind of like turn it around, make it more profitable, so you can grow in a much um, healthier and sustainable way. And yeah, in general, if you like this type of content, you want to learn more about buying businesses, fixing businesses, growing businesses, subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below, let me know if you have specific questions about, about this topic or whatever, and I'm, I'm happy to, to help and reply and get back to you potentially with a specific video for you. Now, when I'm talking about Gary V, and I'm talking specifically about a latest video I had with uh, Jeezy, and uh, I'm sure many of you saw it, but basically what he's telling him is, hey, you should use your music experience to leverage it, to buy other old brands, fix it, and then grow it and, and then basically sell them for much higher multiples. Now, Gary V is also saying that he's gonna do it in the future. His, his plan is to buy an old brand, fix it with his marketing company, which I think is a huge leverage. I mean, he's basically out there working with very, very big brands. He's working with them, he's growing those brands and businesses. So why not just do the same for his businesses? He can go and buy pretty much any business put them into his machine, as, as he's saying, into his marketing company, into his process systems, into growing any business and just leveraging all those things to just grow his brands, his prof portfolio, instead of making other businesses um, successful and rich, which obviously there's nothing wrong about that, but if he can just go and buy those businesses himself, his potential is uh, much higher there. So yeah. Now, another thing I really liked about this video with Jizzy, with Gary and Jizzy, is he's telling him, hey, look, you have those friends, you can go and raise 15 million from each of them, and you buy a very big business, and you just own a small percentage of that business. And that's what, in real estate, they call it uh, being the syndicator, basically the person who's finding the deal, who's finding the capital, who's bringing in investors, and can buy a much larger business. And even if you own a small equity in that business, it's all good, because, I mean, your leverage is so much bigger, it's just like, you know, you can own 100% of uh, zero business or you can own 20% of 100 million business. Which one would you prefer? Right? And that's pretty much what Gary Vee is, is telling him. He's, he's basically saying to him, hey, Jesse, you have the experience, you have the capital, you have the know-how and the contacts, and you can basically say, hey, we're going to buy that business. You're going to raise capital from each of those people. And even if you're going to own less percentage in that business, it doesn't matter because you're going to sell that business for a few billions potentially and your small percentage is still gonna be very big. Now, here's what I would suggest him and Gary Vee, and again, mad respect for both of them, they're huge, they're amazing, but here are a few tips and things I think they can do in order to, I guess, keep Jeezy with more equity in those businesses that he's going to buy. So here's what I would do if I were Jeezy or Gary V in order to buy big businesses and own at least if not 100%, much more than 20 or 25% that he's talking about if he's raising all the capital from his friends. And the first step is just to use that business assets as a leverage for a loan. And that's pretty much what we're doing with our firm. With smaller businesses, he's talking about buying a 
a 200 million business or a 300 million business. And the same process is applied there. Um, I'll probably hopefully get to those type of uh, levels and businesses um, very soon. Like right now, our sweet spot, our business is doing between one to 10 million a year in sales. He's talking about businesses doing 50, 100, 200 million a year in sales. Uh, same process applied, but here's are the first few things you should do in order to buy those businesses and have more percentages. So like I said, the first thing is just, as soon as he's looking to buy a business, let's say he's looking to buy a specific sport brand or whatever, what he should do is look at that business assets. So any business out there, you know, they have a balance sheet with assets on it. Things like accounts receivables, inventory, cash obviously in the bank, many times even real estate that comes with that business. So for example, the office space that they many times own versus leasing. So what I would do first, if I were Jizzy or, or Gary, is go out, look at those businesses, look at the assets that they have on the balance sheet, and many times they can raise debt on those assets versus selling equity to their friends. And if they're raising debt on those assets, they own all the equity. So for example, if that business that they're looking to buy have accounts receivables or inventory or all those you know, real estate or all those things that we talked about, or machinery obviously depends on the type of business they can go out there to financial institutions or many times just asset based lenders and raise a very nice amount of capital from those assets so for example if they have few millions in accounts receivables they can go to asset based lenders and raise literally 80 to 90 percent of those accounts receivables obviously depends on the quality and use that and just pay the interest on that loan don't even many times they don't want to, they won't even need to personally guarantee those assets so they use the business assets as collateral for the loan which means they have no risk for that loan and they'll just own more equity in that business instead of bringing in other investors to take a nice chunk of equity that gary or jizzy could keep for themselves so that would be the first main thing i would look at just hey look at the business you want to buy look at the assets that they have on the balance sheet and instead of just go out and raising equity from your friends or people that you know, go and just create some kind of leverage from those assets, raise debt instead of equity, and then own more equity yourself. So for next step, so let's say they raise some capital from those assets, and that's an amount that they can use to pay uh, for that business. Obviously, it all depends on the negotiation that they have with the business owner, right? Maybe they need to pay exit closing, maybe they need, they need to pay more. Ideally, they'll negotiate to a point where all they need to pay for that business at closing is coming from those assets that they basically raise capital for with just 100% debt. Now, then it's just a matter of negotiating the right deal and that's what we do day to day. We negotiate an amount that we pay at completion and usually every business acquisition, you pay something at completion at the day of the acquisition and the rest of it is going to be structured over a few years, either on a deferred payments or consulting fees or just um, obviously it depends on your negotiation, but ideally they want to get to a point where they negotiate an X amount at closing, which ideally is going to come 100% from uh, the debt that they raised on the assets. And the rest of it ideally is coming from um, milestones that the business is going to reach. And then from those milestones and profits or revenues or whatever they negotiate again, whatever milestone they achieve, just based on that growth, that's what they're going to pay to the seller. And I hope that makes sense and I'm not overwhelming you, but in the end of the day, the ideal deal is to raise capital from those assets, pay that amount at closing for the seller and negotiate terms where the rest of the payments are coming through over a few years, anywhere between one to three to seven years, even I saw deals like that. And every year you pay the rest of the amount for the seller. Now that amount is coming from the business revenues and from and based on milestones that you achieve with growing that business. So Gary can basically come to the business owner and tell him, look, I got this marketing company. I believe I can grow that business to an X amount of profit or revenues. And I want to pay you a significant or a, some kind of a percentages from that growth, which will in the long run give you much more capital or money on your business versus you will pay you everything now at closing. So it's just a matter of selling the future to that business owner versus selling him just, hey, take whatever cash you want right now and that's all. So that's what I would do. Then it's just much less risk on Gary and uh, Jizzy and it's just much less equity that they need to own. The only reason that I would raise equity is 
if basically they negotiate a deal where they can't pay 100% of the payment at closing from the debt. And in that case, GZ and Gary, they can access their network and their contacts and raise what we call an equity kick. They can basically pay the, the rest of the amount from the capital that they raise from the pri private individuals that they know, from the private wealthy individuals. And then obviously in that case, they'll need to sell equity in the business. The only time that I will do it is actually if I'm missing money at closing and then I'll bring in equity investors. And ideally you want those equity partners to have some kind of an added value. So ideally, if you're buying a sport company, you wanna have someone who can add the value to grow that sport company or shoes company or whatever, right? You wanna have someone who can add value either with their contacts, with their um, network, with maybe even sometimes just their social media presence. like. Uh, like basically Gary said, like he can use his network, his uh, influence to promote specific product and just by that growing a company. So ideally you want your other partners to have some kind of an added value as well. And that alone could bring a huge value other than just their capital. So what now? Let's say they agreed on an amount, they bought the company, they raised some capital from debt, from asset-based lenders and the rest of it, if needed, they raised from their contacts, from the private individuals. They had whatever percentages for, for themselves. So let's say GZ bought a company. He now owned 70% in that business and 30% is owned by his equity investors. Obviously, he's owning so much is because he raised debt on those assets. So he's, he's not need, he don't need to um, basically sell more equity. So that keeps him with, let's say, 70% in that deal. And now he bought the business. What's next? What are the first steps that you need to do in order to fix a business and ideally grow it? So here are the first three things I need, I think that they need to focus on in order to grow that business in the right way. Now, those three things are one, everything related to business admin, and we're going to expand on each. The second thing is everything related to the strategic, I guess, direction in that business. And obviously we'll expand on that as well. And the third thing is everything related to the management of finance in that business. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. So the first thing is everything related to admin stuff. And it can be anything related to security, IT, um, suppliers, just the basic things. Even thing like just making sure that no one employee have access to all of the passwords or just every admin related stuff in that business or every, I guess, confidential stuff in the business. You don't want to have a point in any business where all the control is with one person. You want to make sure even during due diligence when you're about to buy that business, just make sure that, hey, that one person is not going to basically be the person who can shut down the business tomorrow just because, uh, I don't know, he didn't like the fact that you bought the business and you are the new owner and maybe he's not getting the same kind of, um, I guess, treatment as before. So you want to make sure, hey, there's no one person who's like the centralized, I guess, person in that business. You want to make sure that everything is in control in your control right now when you're the owner and like literally just even simple things like making sure that you have access to all the passwords of everyone those basic things can change a lot in a business if you don't have that control that basic control those small new things can hurt you a lot if you don't know how to manage them the second thing that i would do in a business is talk to your suppliers obviously it depends on the type of business that you have but just talking to your suppliers and getting better terms and getting better business, I guess, relationships with them can change a lot. And, and many times it just come down to getting a, on a phone call with them or just having a meeting with them and telling them, look, I, I just bought this business. I wanna start a great relationship with you. I wanna make sure that you're helping me to grow. I'm helping you to grow. Let's get you better terms where I can pay you maybe later and I'll pay you whatever you want and maybe you give me a discount. Maybe I'll make you the, the only supplier for our business. Just find ways to get better terms with your suppliers. I'll talk about it in, in basically in the, in, the, in the next few minutes, but those little changes can help tremendously to your cash flow. And cash flow in the end of the day, if you don't have cash, if you don't know how to manage your cash, that alone can destroy your business. So you wanna make sure that your suppliers' relationships are as best and most optimized as they can be. So in a nutshell, you want a shorter payment terms with clients. You wanna to get to a point where clients are paying you ideally immediately. And with suppliers, you want to get to a point where you pay them after ideally 90, 120 days. So in, in that way, you'll, you'll create yourself the marginal, I guess, difference in, in cash flow. And you'll see you'll have positive cash flow in, in any business. I mean, 
the, the fact that you have enough cash to play with enough working capital I mean that's a life changer for a business and that's the difference between business that is insolvent and is about to shut down between a business that can continue to run and grow and invest back that capital and many times that different change in terms between clients and suppliers can make all the difference positive cash flow cycles are crucial to a business make sure to focus on that as soon as possible now the other thing I would do is just look at your clients talk to your clients either existing clients and figure out their relationship with them find out hey is there any other thing i can sell to your clients and just just have a basic conversation tell them hey i'm the new owner i'd love to hear your thoughts what do you what can we do better what are we not doing that good maybe and just potentially offer them discounts coupons find a way to get them back to you to buy more because the existing clients are where you can get the most amount of cash flow as soon as possible because if someone bought you from you already the chances of him buying from you again is just much higher than you going out there and spending marketing budgets to bring in uh, a new client so when you go into a new business go to that list of clients and figure out how can i add more value to them maybe i can sell them some kind of a bundle or recurring revenue opportunities just find out a way to add to them as much value as you can as a second purchase basically again it's going to cost you much more money to find a new client versus uh, bringing in a, 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 a someone who bought from you already as a second time purchase. So find ways, send emails, send letters, call them, call your clients and tell them, hey, look, I have this new opportunity, right? This, this, new, this new product I can sell to you right now. I can give it to you for a discount because we're new owners. We want to make sure you're happy and find a ways to get yourself those clients back. Now, same goes with prospects. Many times businesses have prospects who potentially you have their, their details, their phone, their emails, their address, find a way to then work with them. Again, don't spend marketing budgets before you optimize everything you can do with existing clients. So that's very important. Go to your prospects, go to your existing clients, see how we can work with them, how can, it, how can you add more value to them. Maybe you can go with a, a special promotion for the, the change in the ownership in the business. Let's just try to be creative. And again, remember, it's going to cost you much more to find a new client versus bringing in old client or even a prospect. Just in general, every business that you're looking to buy, and again, those just general tips or for, for Gary or Jizzy, which again, they're, they're amazing, they're uh, incredibly well. But I think another really key thing to focus on is as soon as you go into a business, just find the most I guess low hanging fruit opportunities for you to use in your in order to to grow that business and get it to a point where it's healthy again where it's sustainable where it's profitable again now remember with every business in the end of the day there's only three ways to grow a business one is just increase the amount of customers that you're getting or basically just getting more prospects into your door and for them to to hear about your business so that's the first way to grow a business the second way is to increase the volume of trans each transaction. So basically to bring in clients to buy again or just in each specific transaction to have more opportunities to just get to a point where the overall cart value is just bigger. That's the second way. And the third way is just to increase the frequency. So the second, second way is just to increase the overall cart whenever they buy. And the third way is just to increase the frequency. So for example, if someone's coming back to buy the second, third, fourth time, then obviously your business is gonna make much more money that way. Now let's go through each of those three ways in, in a bit. So the, the, the first way is to bring in more prospects, bring in more clients. And just to give you an example, many businesses that I look into, and we're looking into many, many businesses every week to potentially buy and invest in and acquire, Many of those businesses exist for 10, 20, 30 years maybe, and lots of them never did or created any marketing campaign. Now, just, just imagine the potential of you going in and introducing new marketing campaign. I mean, that alone, just increase, just create something, right? Create some kind of marketing campaign. So in, in, we're talking about Gary Vee. So just imagine Gary Vee bringing his, his, his agency and doing whatever, simple uh, social media campaign to those businesses who never, 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 never did any marketing campaign, any advertising, nothing. All the, the only way for them to grow is by word of mouth, which is amazing. It means that the product is raw and the service, the customer support is amazing. But imagine you going out there and introducing any type of marketing and advertising. I mean, that alone is a, is a game changer. And that's why I think someone like Gary Vee, you can use his machine as he call it his marketing agency as the back end to all of those businesses i mean that's that's a huge value on its own and i believe that many businesses will 
be happy to give him equity for free just for that opportunity. Now let's talk about the second way to grow a business, which is to increase the overall size of the transaction. Um, the best way to do that is just to have an upsell or a cross sell to a different product. So for example, if someone buying, um, I don't know, if a computer, sell him the cover for the computer or a bag for a computer, right? So whatever someone's buying from you, think what else does that person need after he's buying that original product? I mean, that alone could increase your sales by 20, 30% at least. A cross-selling cross -selling opportunity is as well. Just maybe find something else. Just think what else that person is buying. If he's buying a yoga mat, maybe he needs a yoga, I don't know, like a bottle, like a healthy bottle, right? So those things alone, and if you don't have those products on your own, go out there and find joint venture, venture opportunities. Find a business that can offer you that service or that product and sell that to your list of clients. And again, just by having that as an upsell to your main product can have a huge, a huge effect. I mean, you're gonna get 20, 30% more sales and even if you're not getting 100% of the margins on that second product, that's still worth it to you and to that other company that you bought as a, as a joint venture partner. And then you can have cross selling opportunities between their list of clients and your products. And that alone, just bringing in other joint venture opportunities can grow your business tremendously. So that's the second way to grow a business. Just increase the overall card. And that you do that by just having more upsells, more cross selling opportunities. If you don't have that, second product, just find other potential partners and joint, ven joint venture uh, partners to bring them in and increase your overall car card size by offering their product. Now, the third way to grow a business is like we say, to increase the frequency of your clients coming back. And the best thing to do that is just by having promotions, competitions, giveaways, um, even just by sending an email that says, hey, uh, we have that product that maybe you didn't check yet, go and check it out. Just the, the best way to increase the frequency is just by staying in more touch with your clients. If that means, obviously it depends on the type of business, but many businesses, even if you stay in touch with them on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's all good. Obviously some businesses might, um, some of those customers are not used to so many interactions. So maybe just a weekly email or a weekly phone call may, many times can make all the difference. Just, hey, hey, we just wanted to, to ask what's up and tell you about this other product that we have just to, tell you that we have a discount on it right now and we'd love for you to check it out. That alone can sometimes increase your sales a lot. And overall, many of the businesses are not doing that. So you just by you doing those things can increase your business a lot. Now, I just wanna give a credit. Uh, these three ways to grow a business is not something that I invented. Um, it's something that I heard for the first time from uh, Jay Abraham, he's a, a marketing genius. So by all means, if you if you can go in and check his stuff, I mean, he's, he's brilliant and he's, his strategic way of looking at businesses is just amazing and, and many of the things that I know about marketing and businesses came, came from him and, and his ideas and his thoughts. So by all means, yeah, the three ways to grow a business is, uh, is uh, Jay Abraham stuff and is, is incredible. We mentioned the idea of working with your suppliers and things like that. And now I want to expand on that a little bit because the one of the best things you can do to increase your working capital and the cash that you can I guess, work with on a day to day basis. First of all, it's so important for you to have a good management of your working capital. And one of the best things you can do is just increase and have better terms with your accounts receivables. And accounts receivables, um, th those are one of the assets that we talk on the balance sheet, but just by increasing your terms and having better terms with your clients. So if you're used to getting paid from your clients um, within 90 days, uh, or the business is used to getting paid within 90 days as soon as you bought it, just by you going in and introducing a new policy. And again, that all, all that means is just saying, hey, we're the new owners, we're introducing a new policy, you gotta pay us within 30 days now. I mean, that alone, that difference in 60 days can be, especially with those big businesses, can be many, many millions of dollars that you can now have to play with and working capital to work with to basically go out there and maybe invest in other uh, marketing sources, employees, or whatever you need to do in order to grow the business. So just by doing that alone, I mean, that can be the difference between having a profitable businesses or, or not, profitable business or not. So that's one of, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do to just make sure you have good working capital procedures and systems in place to make sure you have enough capital to work with. Obviously, some of the customers won't like that, right? They'll tell you, hey, I'm, do, I'm, I'm doing business with you for years. Um, I'm, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna do that. Even just by you changing the terms 
in a few days can make a huge difference. So even if you, they'll tell you, hey, sorry, we, we can't do that, just tell them, okay, you used to pay within 90 days, let's do it 70 days now. Just even if they won't go down until 30, just those small changes alone can make a huge, huge difference. And don't, don't be afraid to lose a few clients here and there. Obviously, in any business in the end of the day, it comes down to 80, 20 as well. So you'll see 20% will be responsible to probably 80% of your profits or, or revenues. And obviously you wanna make sure you keep those 20% and getting more of those 20% clients. But even if you're losing a few on the way, it is part of the part of the business and part of the process. It just, I mean, you need to know how to manage things in order to just grow in a better way moving forward. And even if you lose a few clients, I mean, that's part of the process, it's part of business. And lastly, let's talk about KPIs. KPIs are key performance indicators. And those are basically things that as a CEO, as the owner, as a shareholder of a business, you gotta make sure that you're aware of them and you're tracking them. And whatever you keep tracking is whatever you can um, figure out if, if it's growing, if it's not growing, and if not, what you need to change. So if you're not tracking things in your business, don't be surprised later that you're not growing or that basically the business is going down. So here are a few things that in my opinion, you gotta track on a weekly or ideally daily basis. Obviously it depends on your role, what you're doing in that business, maybe you're just a shareholder and own other businesses, then you wanna have someone who's running that day-to-day, -day, who's making sure it's responsible to keep track of those KPIs. And those are those can be anything from tracking revenue, sales, margins, uh, leads, cost of leads, conversion rates. So all those things that I just said, those are crucial, especially it depends on the type of business, of course, you'll have different KPIs, but just, you knowing how many leads you got this week, how many, what's the conversion was this week from lead to a, a client and what can you do better? Like all those things that we talked about, ideally have a weekly or monthly of, of a meeting with your employees or with your key management team and make sure you track those things and make sure you literally ask everyone in the business, hey, look, we had X amount of leads coming in this week. Do you have ideas to bring in more leads? And you'll see even, any any person could give you an idea that can change everything for you like some of your employees are working in those businesses for years now and they have ideas that you never or that business never implemented just because he didn't believe in it or he never even thought about it because he's not involved in the day-to-day -day as much of those employees so i think it's really important to have meetings and go through those kpis with them and tell them hey look um even with accounts receivables or, or payables like just tell them, hey, look, clients are used to pay us uh, after 90 days. What do you think? Do you have any ideas or things we can do in order to get them to pay us earlier? Maybe we can give them a discount if they pay everything cash at close, cash 100% on day one. Maybe we can give them better terms in other ways in the business. So always ask everyone around you, how can you improve those KPIs and how you can get to a point where you have better cash flow and working capital going on for you. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the end of the video. Again, if you like this type of content on how to buy businesses, how to grow businesses, how to, to build good businesses, um, subscribe, like this uh, video, comment below. I'm gonna answer to all of your comments. And yeah, let me know what you think. I think this video is basically to show you that, hey, I don't care who you are, you can go out there, buy businesses, even if you have no experience or capital to work with. Um, this video was uh, inspired by Gary V video with Jeezy on him basically talking about the fact that he's looking to buy old brands, fix them and, and then sell them later for a much uh, better price. And I hope you, you got some value from this video. And yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and take care. I'll see you soon.